Learning objectives include economic benefits of fungi and diseases caused by various fungi. There are very good uses of yeast as well as um, filamentous fungi. But since uh, humans always complain about pains and they remember diseases only, and whenever this word microorganisms come, comes in our mind, it always reminds us that there are, there are pains but not pleasures. So there are only few diseases uh, uh, or there are only few organisms that basically cause diseases. Most of them are beneficial, be they bacterium or bacteria or fungi. So uh, let's just quickly uh, review some of the benefits that the yeasts and other fungi uh, are doing to us or, or giving to us. Saccharomyces um, is the yeast that everybody, almost everybody knows about it. Um, alcoholic beverages are used um, in Western world, of course. They are produced. That alcohol is a fermentation product. And Saccharomyces cerevisiae, or various species of this, can produce alcohol anaerobically. And aerobically, um, the same yeast, if cultured aerobically in the presence of oxygen, it um, produces the dough that we make the bread out of it. The same yeast, Saccharomyces, is used uh, um, in biotechnology for the production of various vaccines like a hepatitis B vaccine is just, just one example. There are many proteins that are being produced by this yeast. Yeast is a, is a eukaryotic cell and those proteins that are uh, expressed, uh, they could be expressed easily and with the same conformation, with the same three-dimensional structure that is needed in the body. So this is a tool uh, not only for production, but also for research in the lab. Similarly, there are fungal uses. Filamentous fungi are used uh, on a daily basis. They're producing uh, many products for us. Just to give you a few examples, citric acid is being produced by Aspergillus niger. And similarly, cellulase and another enzyme which degrades uh, cell wall, plant, plant cell wall, which is made up of cellulose. And uh, I must tell you that we humans do not have a capacity to utilize cellulose. This acts as a fiber. We do take uh, cellulose on a daily basis. This keeps our uh, stools soft. Otherwise, um, you know, we'll be having constipation all the time. But um, if that is too much of that fiber, then that is also a problem. So those industries that, like, uh, they are involved in uh, juice, fruit juice productions, they need to clear their pulp uh, from those plant uh, celluloses. So they use cellulase, and that cellulase is commercially being produced by a fungus called trichoderma. Taxol is another example, a useful uh, example. Uh, uh, this is an uh, anti-cancer anti drug, which is produced by a fungus, Taxomyces. There is a plant also that produces the taxol, but if, look, if those, those plants, we would have to harvest them. And if we harvest those uh, plants that are producing this, they will go into extinction, which is not a good idea. So, but on the other hand, these, these uh, fungal uh, filaments or fungi can uh, relieve us from uh, this dangerous proposition. Biological pest control is also one of the area that scientists are working on. They use various fungi that are lethal or not very, or they're, they're disease causing basically. They, they cause diseases in insects. This is an example of a fungus called Entomophaga, which can kill gypsy moth. Gypsy moth basically is a, is a moth, uh, is an insect, which uh, destroys leaves of a, a specific tree 
in the United States, uh, and scientists are working on this. They found that this can kill the gypsy moth. So, similarly, as I earlier mentioned, the taxol is being produced, which is an anti-cancer. There are many drugs that. So, one, another example is penicillin, uh, pen, penicillin, which is producing penicillin for us. There are these. These were the benefits of uh, fungi and yeast. Uh, but there are diseases also that are associated with these fungi and yeasts. The diseases generally uh, are called mycosis. So mycosis are, are conditions that um, when infection happens due to these organisms, we call them mycosis. Based on the level uh, at which in the body they are producing the disease, we can categorize them into various groups. One is called systemic mycosis. So systemic, as the name indicates, it involves various systems, organs, and tissues of the body. As you, you can imagine that the spores of these uh, various uh, fungi, they are hanging in the air all the time. And another thing that you must keep in mind that those individuals that are immunocompromised, their immune system is not very good like uh, 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 children, um, naturally children uh, immune system is not very strong, not very healthy. Uh, it is still developing. And in old people, when they get old, their immune system gets also older. And it's not capable, that capable as it is uh, in, in, when they're adults, or when they're young. So, and these spores are everywhere. They do, do not bother us if our immune system is good, but when we are immunocompromised, the same spores can cause infection in our, in our body. Systemic mycosis involves organs and tissues. So once, and these spores, uh, they're hanging in the air, so their route of entry into the body basically are the lungs. So they go through the respiratory system, but then invade the body and can go anywhere in the body. So this is called systemic mycosis. Uh, examples of those fungi, which basically look like yeast, they behave like yeast uh, in the body, are histoplasmosis and coccidiomycosis. Subcutaneous mycosis is another uh, group of fungi that just stays beneath the skin. Sub means below and cutaneous means skin. So they, are, they cause infection beneath the skin. And sporotrichosis uh, in gardeners and farmers when those farmers and gardeners, if they have punctured wound, small wounds on their hands, these fungal spores can land there and can cause superficial uh, subcutaneous uh, infections. Similarly, another kind of infection commonly seen as a cutaneous mycosis. Cutaneous means skin. Trichophyton is very common. Uh, you might have noticed people um, with the hair loss in a circular form, like in a circular circle shape. And that is typically a fungal problem. And trichophyton, and there's another microsporum, another example is microsporum. These uh, fungi, they have the ability to use keratin that is present in our nails, hair, and skin. So they use as a nutrient. And that is the reason they just stay superficially um, to the skin only do not cause deep, deep problems and can easily be treated. And these infections in common language are also called as ringworm infection. Although it's not a worm, it's a fungus. So in summary, fungi are useful, of course, mostly are useful. There are only few uh, fungal organisms that cause infection in humans as well as in animals.